In many locations, suitable rock material is not available to build barriers and must be imported at significant cost. Geosynthetic containers, on the other hand, can be transported to the location empty and filled with local natural material. This could include sand, soil, gravel, recycled material, treated materials, or a combination. In the right circumstances, sand can also be dredged from offshore. The containers have a uniform size and shape. They can easily be built into structures and offer good public amenity. That is, they are comfortable and safe to access, walk on and sit on. They are also conducive to new flora. Sea plants can attach themselves to the geotextile containers in a way that they cannot to rock. They are versatile and can be made in different sizes, so are useful for temporary structures and emergency protection measures. The geosynthetic material is durable UV stable and has high abrasion resistance. Geotextile sand filled containers offer a softer feel to traditional rock structures. They allow people to climb on them with less chance of injury and provide less welcoming environments for vermin such as rats to establish their nests. Over time, sand will infill voids and be captured in the coarse surface of the geotextile. This creates the appearance of a more natural environment and will encourage native grasses to grow. When using geosynthetic products for coastal protection works, engineers need to consider Location the hydrology of the local environment and where exactly protection against erosion is required, the characteristics of wave and sea activity in the area, as well as potential extreme conditions, access to the site and the availability of filling, what material is most suitable to use to fill the containers, the uniform shape of sand-filled containers allow for accurate and definable underwater placement. This gives engineers more control in implementation. In this unit, we have discussed the use of geosynthetics across a number of erosion scenarios. In broad terms, the erosion risk or problem can be categorized in terms of the level of energy or flow to be resisted. At the low end of the energy spectrum, we have considered environments such as shallow slopes. At the other end of the spectrum, we looked at high-risk infrastructures such as dam walls and bridge abutments, and the more complex engineering solutions that are required to protect them. Often, high risk and high value infrastructure can be found in coastal areas. These too require erosion protection systems and modern geosynthetic solutions are available. Erosion control applications can be considered on a continuum from low energy to high energy. Different geosynthetic products are appropriate at each level along this continuum. Thanks to the following companies which supplied images or contributed to the development of this unit. This lecture series was funded and created by International Fibre Centre, TTNA, the Monash Geomechanics Group at Monash University.